That's good. So I'm Sarah and I work for the UT Extension office in Jonesboro. And part of my job is teaching healthy eating and encouraging physical activity. So we're going to talk a little bit about why physical activity is important. And then we'll go into that and also talk about what drinks we need to drink when we exercise as well and to look at what we're drinking each week. So it's physical activity slash rethink your drink. So we'll talk about that. So why is it important that we have activity? Y'all are so quiet. <laughs> Well, physical activity is very important for us because it keeps us healthy. It keeps our weight down, helps us strengthen our muscles, helps our bone mass and keep our blood pressure in order. And it helps us to relieve stress and anxiety. And it builds up our self-esteem. Now, self-esteem to me is a very important part of physical activity because after you have finished a great project, you're excited, your self-esteem, you're proud of yourself. Physical activity can be part of that too. So there are three parts to an exercise. Now, if you're going to the gym, this is especially important, but there's different ways you can exercise. So warming up, that'd be like walking, jogging, running in place. Like a lot of times when you're watching athletes, you'll see them running in place, warming their muscles up. Why do you think they need to warm their muscles up each and every time? Yes, Grace. To help prevent um, injury and to make sure they don't like overextend something, which could lead to more injury and take them out of whatever sport or anything that they're doing. Yes, it helps prevent injuries and prepare the body for exercise. So, and it helps your temperature of your body. You know how when you run in and stuff, you get really hot and sweaty. Well, it's warm enough for your body because like when we're younger especially you know we run we go run and then we're sore later and we wonder why warming up will help us prevent injuries and make our body feel better so then we actually have and then the stretching exercises as well so when the when your muscles are all warmed up they can be stretched and stretching can help with your flexibility your posture and your range and mountain it is important to never stretch cold muscles. So you wanna warm up first, running in place, taking a brisk little jog around the house, something simple like that, and then you stretch. So for example, stretching muscles, after you warm them up, you know, you can move your arms like this, and then stretching your muscles, especially if you're playing ball like the Reese boys do, especially if you're a pitcher, you have to warm up that shoulder because you don't want to pitch on a cold shoulder because then it won't feel good later. So make sure you do your stretching exercises as well because it helps your flexibility and your range of motion. And if you notice, and this is something I notice, you notice how animals stretch every morning when they wake up. If you have a dog or a cat, notice how when they wake up, they kind of move around a little bit and then they stretch out of a natural way God made them. So that's a good way to think about it. The animals know that they need to stretch out before they start running around the house. So that helps them too. So God kind of created us all in the same way, but we have to remember to do that. So remember to do that. And it's also very important to gradually slow down and cool down. Kind of like when you see runners doing in the Olympics, how they run around really fast, but then they start walking back and forth after they cross the finish line, they don't really stop. That's a cool down stage. It's the slower pace activity helps slow your heart rate down and help your breathing return to normal. So when you're doing a lot of running, it's very important to cool down so your body can return to normal. Because if you stop, dead stop right after, uh, a long run, it doesn't make your body feel good. So make sure you cool down and that helps your muscles too. And it's also stretching muscles during a cool down helps relax them and helps avoid that stiffness or soreness later. 
So stretching is very important in the warm up stage and the cool down stage. So, because if sometimes we stretch muscles even though we're not being physically active. Sometimes when we're lifting something we shouldn't be lifting, it's too heavy. Sometimes we can make our muscles sore. So it's very important if you know you're going to be doing a lot of lifting or any other physical activity like that to make sure we follow these three things. So the three things is warm up, do stretches, and then do your exercise that you're planning for the day, and make sure you cool down because that helps your body feel much, much better. And how much exercise do we need each day or activity as some people call it? How much activity we need each day? See, everybody's got their thinking. Yes, in the chat box, 60 minutes at least every single day we need physical activity because being active means moving your body. So that could be walking, running, playing games, even dancing, any kind of movements like that. So even like if, you're, if you have to push mow your yard, that's a physical activity. So if it takes an hour to mow your yard, you have to push mow it. That's a physical activity for 60 minutes a day. So that's different ways you can do that. Playing basketball, playing hopscotch and jump rope. Those are all physical activities each and every day. So you can be very creative with your physical activity each and every day. Some of them are not as strenuous. I like working in a garden. So working in your garden, hoeing, that will work your arms and your shoulders. Pulling weeds, that pull, that's a, you're doing some sort of work, which is a physical activity. You may not think something like that would be a great physical activity, but it really is. So sometimes working on projects like that, you can be creative of how you get your physical activity each and every day. Uh, walking your dog, if you have a dog, walking him each and every day, you can count that as physical activity as well. So it's very important to do different things. Be creative. You don't have to go play basketball. You don't have to be playing ball of some sort, but if that's what you like, shoot for it. But do something that your body will do well with because everybody's body is different. My brothers play baseball. I never liked baseball. Yeah, I didn't enjoy it. So do something that you enjoy. If walking in the park with your mom and dad is what you enjoy for physical activity, go for it, but be creative. Be creative and do what you love and you'll never work a day. That's what my mom always told me. So the great advantage of homeschooling is you can do a lot of cool things. Um, kind of like my mom would always take us on field trips and we'd walk however many miles a day it was. And when we'd walk these historical places, we'd get the history, but we'd walk and it seems like forever. So you had so many miles in a day. So there you go, you got your PE for the day too. That's the cool thing about homeschooling. You can kind of do a two for one. So that's a lot of fun. So after we cool down and all that, what is the first thing that you all need to reach for after you've done had a strenuous run of the day? Yes, Grace. Something to rehydrate with, preferably water, um, thicken with electrolytes and something preferably healthy to eat. Yes. Water is the most important and most healthy beverage that you can have. And I'm gonna see if I can share my screen. We'll see how this goes. I'm still learning Zoom. All right. This is a PowerPoint that I use. Can you all see that? Okay. So after talking about physical activity and stuff, we're going to hit on drinks too, because a lot of people, when they're thirsty, they don't go for water. Water is very important, very important to stay hydrated. So what are soft drinks? Soft drinks are anything that's not water, pretty much. So you have your soda, lemonade, sweet tea, sports drinks, energy drinks, fruit drinks, basically anything that can be sweetened with sugar. And we're in the South, so sweet tea is a big thing around here. 
So we have all these different beverages. Now, if you're big into sports and you need all those electrolytes, sports drinks are good, but you gotta watch out for the loaded sugar. So we're gonna play a little bit of trivia. How much sugar do you think is in a 20 ounce cola? If you don't feel comfortable with unmuting, just put it in the chat. 40 grams. The actual grams in a Coca-Cola, total grams is 55 grams of sugar. Now, here's a visual of how much sugar I got. That's 16. 16 and one fourth teaspoons of sugar. That's in one drink. That's a lot. And then we wonder why dentists are always fussing at us. So here's the next one that throws me for a loop each and every time. How much is in a 32 ounce fountain drink? This is the one we typically would get from a fast food restaurant and or a gas station. Maybe like a hundred or a hundred and twenty or grams or teaspoons grams grams okay all my visuals are behind me so all right in teaspoons we got 23.5 teaspoons of sugar i measured this out prior to class that's a half a cup of sugar you're drinking. Now, my question is, if I handed you this glass of sugar, just as it is, right here in front of me, would you all turn that up and drink it like it is? We would and would we not? I'm looking at the chat box. <laughs> Very funny, Isakar, or not Isakar, Miriam West. Sorry, you've got a sister named Miriam. But that's a lot of sugar. We wouldn't drink that, but we put it in a beverage and it all disappears. Because what happens when you cook with sugar, it disappears to the naked eye. But it's loaded. And I bet you all would be super hyper if you drank a 32 ounce drink. A lot of kids would be. So we have a 20 ounce fruit flavored soft drink and then a 20 ounce citrus soft drink. So we have 18 teaspoons of sugar in the orange one. And in the citrus, there's 19. That's a lot. So how much do you think is in a fruit flavored tea? In teaspoons wise. almost 10. Now it's a little bit better, but still that's one drink. And if a lot of people count calories, basically you're drinking your calories every day instead of eating them. Now water has no calories, so you can drink all the water you want with that. Okay, sports drinks, 32 ounces. What do you think in teaspoons wise? sports drinks would have. I see a chat. Fifteen, all right, and the answer is, well, thirteen, you were close. That's a lot, especially on them hot days that you wanna chug this whole thing. Now they do make some that have less sugar or no added sugar. Right. So in these energy drinks, which energy drinks are not healthy whatsoever, you got 15.5 teaspoons and then 9.5 teaspoons. That's a lot plus the caffeine. 
Then you have your fruit infused beverage, which you think, oh, it's fruit. Well, there's still five teaspoons of sugar and a 20 ounce nutrient enhanced water beverage has eight teaspoons. Well, quite a bit less than our 32, half a cup of sugar, but it's still hidden sugar you wouldn't think would be there. Your iced coffee, 9.5 teaspoons of sugar. So we've got lots of things like that. And then your fruit drinks and your flavored fruit juices. When you're drinking juices, you wanna make sure it says 100% juice. It's not fruit drink or fruit beverage because that is just as bad as a soda. Because that means they've only used 10, maybe 15% of the natural juices and the rest is usually got high fructose corn syrup in it, which is sugar pretty much. Your apple juice will have a lot more sugar in it than most juices, depending which ones you're looking at. Uh, you got 12 teaspoons of sugar over here. And then your orange juice has nine and three fourths teaspoons of sugar. And then some of your milks too. This is a natural sugar, so it's better to have natural sugar than added sugar. But here your chocolate milk's got added sugar and natural. So that's 13 teaspoons. So there's a lot of sugar hiding. Let me stop sharing. Get caught up in my notes. So what are you all thinking about what you're drinking after you exercise? Water is the most important thing, but sometimes we want to reach for something flavored. Now, when you come to drinking stuff, don't make it an all-time drink, make it a sometime drink. So if you're having a special occasion, let's say it's your birthday, you want a special sometime drink. In moderation, it's not going to hurt you, but if you reach for that each and every time, think of all that added sugar that you're getting. So water, it controls your body temperature. So like when you're outside and it's hot, make sure you drink extra water because it cools you down. Because if you get too hot, you could pass out from dehydration and multiple other things. So it carries the new and it helps with your breathing. It protects your organs and your joints. So that's very important. Our bodies are about 55 to 60% water for adults. It will be more for you guys because you're younger and your body's still growing and developing at a fast rate. So we need to remember that. But another part of our body that will help us with physical activity is making sure we get enough calcium. Now, there's one thing back. What do you think would happen if we had no calcium in our diet whatsoever, what would happen to our body? Weaker bones? That's right, here's my demonstration. I'll, I'll plop. This is what would have happened to our bones if we had zero calcium. Would be a big blob. We would not be able to stand up straight and walk. Our bones would be brittle. So think of that, no calcium equals a blob. That's what I told my Rudy Raccoon guys too. So it's important that we get calcium through our diet. Now, where do we get calcium? Milk, that's right. That's one of the many places we can get it. Dairy products, and there's other things that you can get. There's different vegetables that are of a non-dairy source because there's a lot of people that can't have dairy. So there's certain ju uh, juices and uh, almond and soy milk are fortified, which have calcium in it. And like almonds and broccoli and green leafy vegetables and tofu have calcium in it. So if you're lactose intolerant, that's another way you can get calcium in your diet. That's another thing we drink, and that's another thing we need when we exercise too, because if we don't have enough calcium in our body, it's gonna make not feel good to exercise. And then it just turns into a big ball, and it just keeps adding to it. So how much water in a day do we need to drink? Yes, Grace. 
at least 64 ounces. Now, depending on your weight and body size, like my husband's twice the size as I am, he's a big boy. He's gonna need more water than I am, but it's recommended to drink six to eight, six to eight glasses of eight ounce each day, but more needed if you have a lot of, if you're very physical, you're gonna need a lot more water. If you work outside, let's say your living is a lawn mower, you know, living mowing lawns is your way of income, said that backwards. You're outside all day long, every day. You're gonna need more water. If you play ball, especially them hot baseball tournaments, them basketball tournaments, you're going to need to drink a lot of water. So this is what we recommend when drinking water, especially after your activities. Make, make sure to take a water bottle with you at all times, wherever you go. So when you're thirsty, you got it there. So you can get an inexpensive bottle from the dollar store, your grocery store, they don't cost very much at all. And you can get them as expensive as you want too. So most are at least 16 ounces, so that's two cups. So you can easily drink enough water each day if you fill your bottle at least four times. So if you fill your bottle four times a day, you got the recommended amount. But if it's hot outside and you've been playing ball, you're gonna need more. So you need to drink water before, during, and after a physical activity. <coughs> Excuse me. Speaking of which, let me get some water. But it's very important to stay hydrated. So, and also by drinking water, when you go out to eat, you're saving money. And who likes having a few extra dollars in their pocket? <laughs> I think everybody does. So I was looking at menus online the other day. Let's say you're not a big soda fan, but you like drinking lemonade and all that stuff. So the average money spent on a sit-down restaurant is usually anywhere from at least $1.89 to $2. If some restaurants charge even more than that. So, but we'll say $2 is the average. Let's say you get went out five times this week to get a drink. Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's $10 you could have had to go buy you something else. Whereas if you drunk water, nine times out of 10, it's free at restaurants when you're going out to eat. It don't have to be fancy water. Bottled water, you can buy that if you don't have good tap water. So it's very important to drink water because that will help, help your body stay healthy, stay, help you keep hydrated, and will save you money in the long run if you go out to eat. So I like having an extra $10 in my pocket. So keep that in mind. So remember all these little things, and I hope this helped. Y'all have any questions about exercise and the importance of drinking water? So is everybody gonna start reading food labels on the back of your drinks, see how much sugar you're drinking? That's a good way to save on your calories. Because I would rather eat my calories than to drink it. So let's remember to check the, what we're drinking, stay hydrated, and to remember just those three parts of physical activity. To warm up, to do our exercise, and to cool down. Very three are very important. So that's all I have, unless you all have some questions or anything or if Jillian has any. I don't. Y'all have any? Well, I think it's back to you, Jillian. All right, y'all. You can get out of class early. Woohoo! Um, if you have questions on homework, let me know, or I feel like Miss Sarah might be willing to to help too if you need her to. So um, yeah. let me know, and I will see y'all next week.
see y'all.